three. The New King James Version of the Bible, the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Let us all stand for the reading of God's word, if you can. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. Isaiah, chapter 43. I'll start at verse 18 through verse 21. Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 18 through 21. And it reads as follows. Do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Verse 20, the beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I will give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Verse 21, this people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my Praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I like to use for a subject just for a few minutes. God is doing a new thing in you. God is doing a new thing in you. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as humble as we know how, giving your name the praise and glory and honor for everything they've done for us. Heavenly Father, as we open up your word this morning, Lord, open up our spiritual understanding that we may receive your word, place it in our hearts so we do not have to sin against you. Heavenly Father, let your word make a mark upon us that will not be erased. And if there's somebody here today who does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, Father, after your word is preached, Lord, we ask that you will let your Holy Spirit touch their heart and prick their hearts that they will say, what must I do? to be saved in Jesus name amen God is doing a new thing in you as a matter of fact when you look at that scripture <clears throat> you should put your name in front of it and, and as a matter of fact I want you to turn to your neighbor and, and, and say this behold God will do a new thing in you you shall swing forth shall you not know it God will even make a road in the wilderness for you and rivers in the desert for you. Come on, somebody say amen. He's going to do a new thing. This is an amazing book. This is an amazing book, the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah uh, really is the king of prophecies. Uh, this book is filled with prophecies about the Messiah. First, it describes the events leading to the Babylonian captivity. In the second part of the book, it talks about the redemption and the restoration of Israel. And then the third part of the book, it talks about the Messianic kingdom, the 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ. Now, the second part of Isaiah is known as the Book of Comfort. Oh, yeah, we know why. We know why. Because we know in that section, it talks about our salvation and how God is really going to comfort us. The great theme of the book of Isaiah is salvation by faith. Oh yes, oh yes. But you know, Isaiah, he died as a martyr uh, by the hand of King Manasseh. So this passage, this passage in Isaiah talks about the redemption of the Jews. Now remember, because this is the book of prophecies, uh, when you read prophecies about Israel, you can just apply that to yourself as meaning that these prophecies also refer to us today, amen? In, in, in the spiritual sense, in, in the church sense, they still apply to us. So uh, time is only going to permit me not to go over for the, all the verses we read, but just one verse, and that's verse 19. So there's three points that Isaiah made <coughs> and three in verse 19 that I want to expound on this morning and let's look at them. He said three statements. He made three statements. Point one, let's look at the first statement. Behold, I will do a new thing. 
Oh, yeah, that's what Isaiah said. Now, he's prophesied. He, Isaiah is not saying he will do the new thing. Isaiah is saying God says I will do a new thing. Right? So, so that word behold, this word is very often used to make something exciting, something fascinating, something attractive. It is a note of admiration. As a matter of fact, this word behold is used in the Bible 1,298 times. The word new thing is used by Isaiah four times. Now, what, what does new thing mean? New thing refers to things which you've never heard or planned before. Yeah, yeah, a new thing. It's unprecedented. It's unparalleled. It's, it simply says it's something that we've never, ever seen before. It's the first of its kind. It's a new thing. Yeah, yeah, new thing refers to things that have never been done in the history of mankind. So notice what God says in this book. He says, new thing. New thing is what? New thing is a new work of God. Do you know that God can do a new work in you every single day? Oh yeah, he can do a new work in you. All of your present glories, all of your present uh, accomplishments ha won't even compare to the new thing that God is going to do in you. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that means, that means you can't live off your past accomplishments. There was a show, there was a show that came out in the 1990s. I don't know if you remember this show, but it was called Married with Children. I don't know if you remember that show. Uh, it wasn't that really a good show. You know, it was kind of derogatory to the family. But there was a character on that show called Ted Bundy, right? Ted, Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy always lived in the past. Ted Bundy always talked about his past accomplishments. Ted Bundy was 40-something, 50 years old, talking about all the, the, the things he did when he was in high school. How nobody, the high school, nobody still beat his record in high school. Listen, you can't live in your past. And you can't live off your past accomplishments. God want to do a new thing in you. Oh yeah, when, when, when the new work of God starts in you, all that old stuff gonna pass away. New thing means it shall surpass all of your old things. Now, compared to the new thing, the old things are, won't be prominent anymore. Compared to the new thing, the old thing will lose its glory. It will lose its radiance. It will all be gone. I, I think the scripture does tell you this, that uh, when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, all things are passed away. All things have what? Become new. Yeah, I know we got some Bible readers here. Yes, I, I, out with the old, in with the new. God is going to do a new thing in you. So you can't live off your past success forever. You got to have some new starts. You got to have some new things that God is talking to you about, right? I know God has given you some dreams. I know God has given you some visions. Uh, how about this? God, uh, allow me to do what you see me to do, right? We have to say, God, do a new thing. We know what we used to be. We know what we used to do. But guess what? God wants you to have some new success. God wants you to have some new things happening in your life, right? You can't keep throwing up what you did 10 years ago. God wants you to do a new thing. L listen to this. I'm going to stay right there in Isaiah. Isaiah, the, ne the next chapter over. You can write it down. I'm going to read it for you. 44, Isaiah 44 and 3 says this. Did you know that when God do a new thing in you, he's going to give you new blessings? I'm going to read it for you. You don't believe me. Watch this. 44, 33. For I will give you abundant water for your thirst and your parched fields, and I will pour out my spirit and my blessings on your children. See, that, that's what God do. When, that's what he'll do when he do what? A new thing in you. See, what, what blessings? The blessings which you will enjoy. When God does a new thing, you will enjoy the blessings he's going to give you. He's going to give you the blessings which you will experience. He's, he's going to bless you with your own uh, ideas and your own visions and dreams that he will bring to pass if you line up your life according to his will. Amen? 
Oh, yeah, so the blessings of God will be new to you and to others. Watch this. You know it's a new thing when it goes beyond your imagination. You know it's a new thing when it goes beyond what you could ever ask for or what you could ever think. Let me tell you something. Have you ever, have ever God, has God ever placed you somewhere or done something for you that you would have never, ever saw yourself in five years ago? Come on, I don't know about you, but I, I, I didn't see this day. Oh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't see this day. You, you could have told me that 20 years ago. I said, you got to be kidding me. No, no, see, God will do stuff beyond your imagination, beyond what you can think or ask for. I, I used to tell people uh, in our church, I used to tell them, listen, listen, I, I've been trying to get to seminary for, for many years, but God always had me going to this school or going to that school. But guess what? I, here I am, started off as a social worker, I end up being a principal. Now, who, who does that? That wasn't in my plan to be a principal, but see, God does a new thing. He'll open up doors that you never saw. But all you got to do is put your trust in Jesus Christ. I wish I had somebody here that knew what I was talking about today. Listen, Jeremiah said it this way. He said, call unto him, and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you know not. So guess what? Whatever you're asking God for, listen, that's just small stuff. God want to go beyond what you're asking him. Oh, yeah. We, we, we think small. We, we think small things. God will go beyond your imagination on how he want to bless you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, it's a new day. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah, Jeremiah says this. I, I, you know, I, I pray with a, a young brother every morning. We pray together, and I, every time I pray in the morning with him, I say this every time in my prayer, Lord, I thank you for a new day. You see, even tomorrow can't compare to, to tomorrow can't compare to today because today is today. Tomorrow will be a new day. Now, what does that mean? It means this: everything tomorrow starts all over again. Right, right? So watch this. Your sins that you committed today, if you don't ask God for forgiveness, guess what? You need to ask for forgiveness because it's a new day tomorrow. And if anybody bring up what you did today, then you tell them not, see, that was yesterday. I don't know what you're talking about. That's in the past. I know it only happened five hours ago, but five hours ago was midnight, so it was new. <laughs> it's a new day today. It's in the past. I don't even know what you're talking about. So watch this. Jeremiah says this. He says this. Uh, also in the book of Lamentation, he wrote that book. He said this. God's words are fresh every morning. Isn't that something? Not only did he say that, he says his words are new compassions. They are new mercy. They are his new grace. They, they are his new life. They are new opportunities. And he's just talking about God's word. So every time you get down into God's word, you're going to have a new opportunity to watch God move in your life. Amen. Did you know even when you go to bed at night, that your body, the cells in your body rejuvenate every day. Did you know that? While you sleeping in your bed, God thought about your physical body and he'll make that brand new. So yeah, it's a new day. Yeah, yeah, it's always a new day. Every day is a new start. Every day is a new beginning. God, give God some room in your life and guess what? He's going to work on your behalf. Uh, so I guess that's the problem there, right? The problem is we don't give God any room. See, God can't make and do a new thing in us because we don't have time to fit God in our little busy schedule so he can do something in our lives. Some people think that they can tell God what to do. God, see, listen, listen, I want about, by the time I'm 50, I want to be here. Lord, by the time I'm 40, I should be a millionaire. Now, you know when I'm 30, I should get that record deal by the time I'm 30. And you know, yeah, I want to work with all the top people. Now, see, you're trying to put it all together together by yourself. How about this? You wave your lips, lift your hands and say, God, God, I'm a blank page. You write on me what you want me to do. God, you tell me where to go. God, you, you order my steps, Lord. You, you make my life brand new. God, you make it come to pass. Lord, let me move myself out of the way and let you do a new thing in my life. 
Yeah, get rid of your program and get God's program. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, what you should say is, yeah, God, I need you in my life. So God wants to do a new thing in you. Yes, he does. But here it is. Here's the key point. How can I get God to do a new thing in me? And how can you get God to do a new thing in you? Watch this. Write this word down. Uh, just to let you know from now on, bring you a little piece of paper. You can take the bulletin if you want to, and you can write on it. If we need some more pens next week, we'll buy some more pens. But you need to take some notes. Because, see, you got to eat on this all week, right? You got to say, wait a minute. He did say, oh, yeah, here's the point. Surrender. When you surrender all, when you give God everything, he can do a new thing in you. Why, 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 why would I surrender all? Well, because when you surrender, it leads you to uh, uh, really express the joy and thank God for forgiving you of all your sins. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you surrender all, just think about it. Everything that we've done wrong in our life, don't you know that we have a forgiving God? Oh, man, he is so forgiving. He doesn't hold any grudges. He doesn't look backwards. He didn't go back to when you was 25. He didn't try to bring up anything. He, he didn't do, he didn't do the, 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 the Kavanaugh on y'all. He didn't go back to your high school years. He didn't do that. He, he didn't pull up your yearbook. He didn't pull up the top, your, your, your prom night. He didn't bring all that stuff up. He forgave you of all your, all your sins. And he, guess what? He not only did that, he wiped it all away. I don't care what people bring up about you. You say, it's in the past. I don't care what it is. It's in the past. Uh, it is 2019. It's not 2018. It's 2019. So it's a new day. It's a new beginning. So whatever happened in 2018, 2017, 2016, you need to say, listen, I'm going to let that go, and I'm going to live for God in 2019. Oh, yeah. So when you surrender, when you surrender, you surrender all because it leads you to thank God for your justification. It leads you to thank God for your sanctification. And ultimately, it's going to lead you to thank God for your eternal life. Isn't God good that he's giving you eternal life in spite of what we did not do? In spite of all the stuff we done wrong, he still gave us eternal life. What kind of God we serve. That he'll forgive us of all of our sins. And, and, and as mean as some of us can be, he still woke us up this morning. Good morning. How are you? What's good about it? Yeah, that's how some people are. That's how some people are. You say, well, let me tell you how good. You, you woke up in your right mind. You could be on a ventilator with a machine waking you up or feeding you with a tooth down your throat. You need to say, God, I thank you for another day. I don't know how many days I got left. But I'm going to thank you for this day. I just did a funeral. I just did a funeral yesterday of a, a young man, 28 years old, leaving his mother's house on Christmas night. He had all three of his children in, in, in the car with him, dropped the kids off home, going back home to mama, got ran into a car accident, and he was ejected out of the car. 28 years old. You better thank God for today. Oh, you don't know when you're going to leave here. You don't know when it's your last time. He, he, he probably thought he had all the time he had. But thank God, I, I met him when he was nine. I, I, I met him and then led him to Jesus Christ when he was nine and ten. And he was baptized then. But guess what? So God already knew what was going to happen at 28, right? Let me get him when he's nine. Let, let me get him now because I know what's going to happen in the future. Guess what? When you start a relationship with God in your life, he already knows what your life going to end up to be. So you need to give him praise now. I know it's bad. Yes, I know the doctor said you sick. But thank God for the sickness because sickness ain't going to last always. Oh, yeah, it can't hold you back. Yeah, I know you've been on the, in the unemployment line for a while. But keep, put your hand in God's hand. He's going to bless you with that job that you ask him for. you got to surrender all. There's another thing he said this too. He said this also in that passage. Fear not. In other words, when you surrender all, you should not fear anything that 2019 is going to bring us. Now, we're only in day six of 2019. We don't know what day seven is going to bring. We don't know what uh, February, March, 
April and May gonna bring, but guess what? I know who holds the future, right? God got everything in his hand. So whatever 2019 got in store for me is not better than me having a relationship with God in my life. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. No matter what, if it's negative, I don't care. And from this point on, it goes all down here for here for me and, and, and my health. Guess what? I thank God I had time to shout on January the sixth, 2019. If that's the last time I'm going to shout. See, watch this. Your prayers and your fasting will certainly bring changes in your life. But you got to pray and you got to fast. So, so it brings changes because when you pray and fast, it hones in on your relationship with God. Your relationship, your communication with God is your prayer life. So if you're not praying to God, if you're not connected with him, how can he do a new thing in your life? You, you, you probably you probably thinking the new thing is what some rappers are tr trying to rap about. No, that's not the new thing. The new thing is this. God wants to create a closer relationship with you. Two things are going to happen when you surrender to God. You need to write this down. I'm going to pause here. Two things. You got to write this down. Two things are going to happen when you surrender everything to God. Number one. Your storms, your trials and tribulations will be moved, will move out of the way. They will be moved from you by God. That's number one. When you surrender all, watch this, God will move your problems out of the way. It's like, well, that didn't happen yet. Okay, that brings me down to point number two then. So if, if that didn't happen, point number two. Or if God don't move it immediately out of the way, guess what? He gonna hold your head and walk you through that child. Yeah, come on, we're gonna go through the storm together. Yeah, we're gonna go through your tribulation together. Either he gonna move it so you don't go through it, or he gonna walk through it with you. But you got to believe God is holding your hand all, every step of the way. Amen. Uh, listen to this. Listen. He says this in chapter 43, verse 5. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Do you know God is with you every single moment, every single second? He's always there. The reason we don't see changes in our lives is because we resist to, to, to allow God to, to do a new work in us. And God wants to do a new work, but we keep resisting. We keep holding back. We don't, keep, we don't pray. We don't read the Bible. We don't go to Bible uh, Sunday school. We don't go to Bible class. We don't do any of that. But, but let somebody tell you that they're going to cut your hours down at your job to 20 hours a week. Boy, you're going to be praying and fasting forever. It seems like, it seems like the only time we want to praise God or call on him is when we get in trouble. But have you ever heard of the phrase, you need to be prayed up? Have you ever heard of the, pray, the phrase, you need to be praised up? Praise him in the good time and praise him in the bad time. You see, when you praise him when everything is going good, guess what? It wouldn't be too bad when everything's going wrong. Because I'm already prayed up. I, I, I know I know what the doctors told me, but I'm already prayed up. And if he takes me out of here tomorrow, I'm going on to be with the Lord. That's the attitude we should have. Yeah, see, here's another problem. The problem is we don't want to come out of our comfort zone. Oh, yeah. That, that's a, see, we like the tradition that we're in. We, we like it just the way we are. Because if God pulls us out of our comfort zone and start doing a new thing in us, then we, we don't like that. We don't like the change that God can do. But guess what? Change is good if it's going to help your life to be better. Oh, yeah. Open your eyes and see the changes that God will bring forth. We're going to read out of point number two. He says this. Not only he says he's going to do a new thing. He says this. It shall spring forth. Now, what did he mean by that? This new thing is going to spring forth. So watch this. Time will give me, will not allow me to go into detail. But the spring forth represents this. He's comparing you to a tree. He's comparing you to a plant. So he said, it shall spring forth. When you plant a seed in the ground, when springtime comes, right? The flowers are supposed to bloom. Everything is supposed to grow. <clears throat> so what he's doing is, he's comparing you to that plant, to that tree. And he says, when you surrender all, when you turn everything over to him, guess what he's going to do to you? He's going to cause you to spring up. 
He's going to cause you to swing forth. He's going to cause you to grow. And you might say, well, no, uh, that, that, that really doesn't do it for me. But watch this. He didn't just say he's going to cause you to spring forth. He said this, I will cause you to spring forth while you are in the desert. <laughs> right? When there's no water around you, when you're in the, the worst situation in your life, you're going to spring forth. When, when the doors are slammed in your face, he's going to spring you forth. When you got bad news, when you got rain with children, you still going to spring forth because you surrender all to God. Oh, yeah, even in dry places, even when your life gets dry, he said you're going to spring forth. He's going to give it to you. New ways he's going to give you in the wilderness. He's going to pour rivers even in the desert. That's what the scripture says. You know what that means? New opportunities going to open up. Uh, new possibilities going to open up. New potentiality is going to open up. A new era, a new time frame. Everything in your life is going to be brand new. But watch, watch this. The greatest thing is he's going to do stuff that you can't imagine God to do. That, that's what I love about it. God will go beyond your dreams. He'll go beyond your what you're asking for. He'll see your need and bless you anyhow. I wish I had some help here. Your thought, your thought or plans are too small for God. Yes, they are. God's ways, God's plans, God's thoughts about you are gigantic. They are superior. They are greater than what you, what, what you could ever think or ask for. So that's what God wants to do. He is the ultimate designer. He's the ultimate architect, right? He knows how to plan your life. He knows what you should do, but guess what? You've got to turn everything over to him. Oh, uh, don't you know that? Don't you know that? It goes to my last, my last point. He says this, shall you not know it? Watch this. And I'm going to my seat after I tell you this. He said, shall you not know it? He said, why does this seem familiar to you? You should know this already. Shall you not know that God is the one that can make a way out of no way? Don't you know? In other words, don't you know this already? Oh, that's right. You got to study the Bible to know this. That, 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 that's right. You got to have, see, listen, the world can't come out of you if it ain't in you. I can't make you spiritual. You got to be spiritual because you get involved in your own spirituality. See, the thing is, you take the word of God and you place it on the inside and guess what? Rivers of life are going to come out of you. Now, I know some other stuff been coming out of you lately, but that's not the rivers of life, right? But you want the rivers of life to come out of you. You want God's words to come out of you. So guess what? In other words, don't you know that God says, don't you know that even in the wilderness that God will turn your wilderness into a, a great forest? Don't you know that God will give you direction and provision when you are confused? God will give you direction when you are perplexed. God will give you direction. Watch this. When you are fearful, don't you know that if you read God's word, he will take good care of you. Don't you know that the late in the midnight hour, God can turn your situation around. Can I have a witness here that you called on him late in the midnight hour and he turned your situation around? Well, I began to think about that thing. I began to understand that God wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to do a new thing in me. Well, we got to call on him. And then I thought about some scriptures in the word of God. In order for you to call on him, you got to know who he is. So if you give me just two minutes, can I remind you of who God is? And uh, the first thing I want to remind you that he is Yahweh. He says, I am that I am. I am the self-existing one. There is no one greater than me. Did you know that they call him El El Yah, the Most High God? Did you know they call him Adonai, which means the Lord God? Did you know that they call him El Shaddai, which means the Lord God Almighty? Did you know that they call God El God. Did you know that they called him Jehovah Jireh? That means the Lord who will provide. Did you know they called him Jehovah Rapha? That means the Lord who heals you. Did you know they called him Jehovah Nisi? The Lord is my battle. Did you know they called him the El El Quana? Which 
Jesus to be your Savior. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as humble as I know how. I 
repent of my sins right now in Jesus' name. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart that God, you raised him from the dead for my salvation, for my victory. I accept him right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Everyone standing. Everyone standing.